Hello everyone, my name is Quentin Rossetto and today I'm going to give you some quick tip on how to get a nice smoke simulation that's not too mushroomy. So I'm within my scene, I've set up a basic setup. I have a sphere with a pyro source, volume scatter. scatter. Uh, I'm generating a density and temperature attribute on the points, which are... Uh, Converted uh, into a volume by my volume rasterize attribute, and that's getting fed into a dot net, which has a basic pyro solver sparse with a smoke object, a voxel size of 0.04 because my computer is pretty old, and a volume source where I get my density into the density, my temperature into the temperature. And I stop the emission after 20 frames because my computer, as I said, is old as fuck. And when you press play, you get this dreaded, annoying simulation. Bam. Look at that. Beautiful. It's so smooth on top of it. So what can I do to make this a little bit more interesting? Uh, first thing you can do is uh, work on your source. I'm going to copy this so I have both to compare it after it. So first thing you can do is work on your source. Right now you're giving it uh, an information of density and temperature that's equal to 1 everywhere. So there is no difference in all the point value. Uh, to make a more interesting source, uh, you can set it as it is and then use a attribute noise float to give some more random value to your point. So let's uh, multiply since the attribute exists already. And we're going to give it a size that's a bit smaller, like 0.25. Let's create a little bit more contrast with my ramp. And let's animate this noise with the pulse duration of plus five. I'm going to do this for my density as well as my temperature. A little bit of offset so it's not exactly at the same point. So my uh, emitter is a bit more interesting. And already that's going to make a bit of difference. Gonna creating some small details, some small streak in uh, my smoke. More difference. Getting a bit more detail, and for the temperature, it's gonna make some difference, which is gonna make the smoke rise less uh, uniformly. Uh, speaking of smoke rising, it's rising pretty fast. It's only uh, one second and my smoke went up by like 10 meters. That's going really fast. What's happening? Well, if I go into my simulation and check my pyro solver under simulation temperature, you have two things interesting. The ambient temp, which is what is the temperature of your scene, and the reference temp. What does a value of one in your temperature field stand for? And by default, it's 3000 Kelvin. Uh, what is 3000 Kelvin? That's like 2700 degrees. That's really hot. You can pretty much melt anything at this temperature. Uh, for example, a uh, uh, typical wood fire, you're closer to something like 600 degrees, which is 800 Kelvin. So, uh, to get a more good looking simulation, check what the reference temperature is, depending on what you're trying to do, and have something that's more in tune with that. 800 Kelvin, it's not gonna rise as fast. See, it rose twice as uh, less as by default. 
Now the thing that's pretty nice also is uh, the cooling rate. How fast does this smoke cools down? I like to have it a little bit higher. This way the smoke settles a bit quicker. See some parts that just stay back because with our emitter we have some zones that are less warm than other. So that's the first thing you can do to make it a bit more interesting. No for the dreaded mushroom. Uh, what's the problem with the mushroom? Well, it's so smooth, it doesn't look uh, realistic at all. If you check some reference, you're going to see that it's normal for fast expanding uh, smoke, that's uh, all new, to have some things that's more spherical. But that's just too perfect, too smooth for me. So I want to add some turbulence to break it apart. If you go under the shape uh, tab, you have the disturbance that's here just for that. So let me check my disturbance. And, and let's put something pretty high, like 15. Hit play. You can see as soon as it starts, you don't have this perfectly smooth shape. But what's, this pro what's the problem with the disturbance? It's, it's being applied everywhere. It's based uh, on the density. And on, only on the outside of your smoke, but it's going to be applied everywhere there is, where there is more than 0 0.05 of density. And that's problematic because although it looks good on the top, you have all those parts under it that are... Let me reduce my dissipation so we have the smoke a little bit longer. Uh, all those parts that are supposed to settle down and stop moving, well, the disturbance keeps on breaking it, breaking it, breaking it, it keeps appearing, it keeps expanding. That looks weird. That looks really weird. And your eyes is really going to notice this in your simulation. It's gonna go, the brain is going to go, wait, why is it not settling? So what can I do to uh, mask my disturbance so that it only apply to fast moving part of my simulation that cause me a problem well uh, let me uncheck the disturbance and we're going to check the pressure field the pressure field is being generated by the solver to be able to make his uh, nice uh, smoky magic and you can see it under the smoke object if you tick the pressure tab, if I start it again, you can see that where is pressure at its highest? It's uh, in the problematic part of my simulation. So that's pretty useful. If I go under the pressure tab, I can specify if I want the mean and max range. By default, it's 0 to 1. But I've seen in this case, that a value of 0302 is what I need to have a nice red part, so 100% in the problematic part of my simulation. I'm gonna copy the max of my guide range, guide range, copy parameter, and on my uh, disturbance tab under the pyro solver sparse. I can, on my uh, disturbance, I have to reactivate it, have a control field that's going to act like a mask. I go to type pressure here, and the control range max, I'm going to go right click, face relative reference. And once I've done this, it's going to be linked to the visualization of my pressure. This way I can tune the visualization. And once I have it as a like, it's going to automatically set up the control field for my disturbance. Let me remove the visualization of the pressure. And what we're going to do is visualize uh, our disturbance field. You can see. My disturbance field is being applied 
only to the top and a little bit in the middle of my simulation. If I look at the results, well, I'm getting some nice turbulence that are breaking uh, the mushroom effect. But once the smoke starts to settle, there is less uh, pressure. The disturbance is not being applied to those parts of my simulation. And I'm getting something nice, thin, that's not always changing shape like at the top of my pressure. That, that's nice on the eyes. That's something our brain enjoy and think. Ooh, that's nice. See how it's stopped moving, just settling. I don't keep having noise being added to your simulation. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's a really easy way to uh, break the mushroom effect uh, and not have it uh, create more problem after it with our control field. A rule of thumb, what I like to do, and I've already done it here, I have it by default. I like to get my smoke object uh, voxel size and use that as uh, my base block size. Right now it's my voxel size times three. This way, if I come back and change my resolution, my uh, noise, so the disturbance noise is going to be uh, linked to my resolution. And I don't have to find what's a good size for it is. Uh, what's nice also with this technique is like you can really have a high disturbance value. Don't really worry about it, which allow you to really break really fast in a few frames uh, the problematic area. And since it's not being applied to more quiet part of your smoke, that looks pretty good. Let's take 220. And last thing to do, because although it's nice to have parts that settle down and stop uh, moving too much, we're making a smoke outside. Uh, there are always going to be some force in your scene. There are always going to be some wind, even so ever so slightly. So it's right there. Just take wind, have some force, rubbing your smoke and moving it a little bit on the side. That looks better. As well, you have turbulence, have some turbulence. Why the hell not? Let's have a little bit more. By default, the turbulence is being applied with the temperature. So since you've said that the temperature cools pretty fast, this noise also is not gonna stay all time. Get out of it so we can have pretty nicer lighting. Look at the result. Nice, the smoke is settling, but the wind keeps a little bit of movement to the side. We have a lot of nice detail. We have active zones that change really fast where the noise is happening. And all the parts that have time to settle, to stop transforming. That's pretty cool. And really quickly, we don't have the mushroom effect. We don't have a perfect uh sphere on our simulation and then you can always spend hours tinkering with all those parameters until you get what you want but that's my uh quick and easy fix for mushrooming uh on your simulation i hope that's uh, useful otherwise you're gonna get stuck with this kind of simulation, which are a bit uh, dull, rather have that. Uh, I hope that was uh, useful for you. It was a really quick tip. Uh, once again, I'm Quentin Rossetto, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.